Hi, welcome back to Ash on Film. I'm your host, Three Children Inside a Trench Coat, and today I'm going to be looking into my PsyQ. I once took an IQ test for my YouTube channel and discovered that I was a genius and joined Mensa. The video is not on my channel anymore because the production value was non-existent. And today, maybe I'll discover I'm an advanced psychic. The test is hosted by a website called psychicscience.org and I'm not even going to touch the name because the image at the top of the website is this. These giant hands cover so much of this person's face that they had to extend the forehead to have the space to paste this eye and I guess they didn't have time to line up the top and the bottom of the head? Is this what happens if you become a psychic? Do you become Frankenstein's monster? Did Mary Shelley psychically channel a critique of modern day society's alienation and isolation? Hmm, let's do the test. I think they spent all of their design budget on the Fiverr image at the top. Designer? I hardly know her. Just go full Windows 95 or go home. I often jump to conclusions based on intuition. Well, I tend to overthink and I'm trying to do that less. But now I'm wondering if I'm suppressing my psychic abilities. No, that's overthinking it. The paranormal is real. If you don't already know my stance on this, it's that I don't think ghosts are real but I am hyped to be proven wrong. I am ready to haunt or be haunted. I'm a ghost ally, please come out to me. Electrical devices sometimes stop working or behave strangely for no apparent reason when I am around. Oh, there's a reason. I drop things into water all the time. Aww. I often see colors surrounding a person. It's a yes for that one, but that's because I have synesthesia. I can communicate with those who have died. I mean, if I'm answering yes to this, I don't think I need a test to tell me if I'm psychic. It's a firm no, sadly, unless any ghosts want to. No, okay. Sometimes it feels that another mind is working through me. Teens, girls, lesbians, the mentally ill, the very sad folk music enthusiasts. Sometimes my speech or actions seem mysteriously inspired. That's aspirational, to be honest. I don't usually look for rational explanations for mysterious events. This is the question that will out me as a skeptic. The website's gonna be like, she looks for a reason, blue pill alert. I have the ability to move things with my mind. If I could do that, would I be sitting taking this quiz or would I be out in the world moving things with my mind? If one day things just start moving, it's me. Come for me, I don't care, I'll move you. I can form pictures in my mind without difficulty. Synesthesia! There are powers in the universe beyond scientific explanation. Eels? It is important to avoid a skeptical attitude toward the paranormal. Is this a question or is the test just telling me off? My dreams sometimes foretell the next day's events. Okay, I don't know how to explain this, but this does happen to me. I recently started working in a place. I know, shocking, but it gets weirder. I had a dream about the room I'm working in before I ever saw it. So I had a dream maybe a few weeks ago about a space, uh, the, the layout, the way in which you would interact with it. And then I showed up and I was like, oh, I've dreamt of this place before. And this has happened a few times in my life. I really don't know how to explain it, but I'll quite often dream of a thing and then see it in real life. I need to start dreaming about like financial independence and traveling the world and meeting ghosts. So the test is quite simple and honestly repetitive. It has asked me if I can imagine things like four times. I'm beginning to think this is actually just a random word generator embedded into Microsoft Paint. So yeah, there's really not a lot to discuss on the questions. Let's take a look at the results. Your PsyQ score is... 49. So I have moderate tendencies. My strongest categories are luck and imagination, which seem to me like the ingredients for psychicness. My imagination score is 100% work. It's not a surprise given synesthesia, but it does stroke my ego. However, I do lack all of this. And I see the colour psychology here. The red, amber, green traffic light system has had such an iconic cultural impact. It's like, go, run with your imagination, fly. And then it's like, no, stop, no psychokinesis for you, stop, no. 49% overall is probably quite accurate. I'm the type of person that doesn't believe, but wants to believe, but just has that little 1% of doubt that tips me into the skeptic scale. But since this test was pretty short, 
and provides no explanation of the results. And I'm a psychic cusper who maybe just needs a little push, a little guidance, a little know-how. Crap. Step one, learn about the different kinds of psychic abilities. And they are different to the ones in the test. Can the psychic community just come together and agree on the names of the types. I know there's more than one way to skin a cat, but how do you do it with your mind? Imagine you are using your third eye, the chakra or energy field that is located above your real eyes. Oh, I think that's what the test was going for with that image, but they actually didn't ask about that ability at all. Visualize this third eye opening and expanding. See what you notice in the mind's inner screen. Try this with your eyes shut. This makes my forehead itchy. Is that how it works? Now my fringe is a mess. Oh no, what's going on here? Clairvoyance means you're able to see spirit images. For remote viewing, determine a remote location you want to sense, shut your eyes and think about the location. Shift your intention upward to your third eye, note the first impression you have and write it down. Right, that's quite a lot. So I get to set the location, I'm gonna shut my eyes and I'm gonna think about the location that I want to see. So I decided to visualize my friend's apartment and I could see him sitting relaxed by the window, smoking, which is something he does pretty regularly. But then I just started imagining going on a road trip with him up the highlands in the winter. Where is the line between dreaming and clairvoyance? Because I just felt like I was falling asleep. But then maybe half a year from now, I'll be like, oh, I dreamt of this. Clear audience means the ability to receive spirit impressions in the form of sounds. To practice clear audience, repeat a word in your mind as you think it. This helps develop your inner voice. If I repeat a word in my mind, it stops making sense. And that feels like the opposite of being a psychic. Steamed hams, steamed hams, steamed hams, steamed hams. It's a regional dialect. Step two. Practice your psychic ability with small objects. The key is to find an object that's been used, as psychics believe it will have more energy than an unused object. Where am I going to find an object in my own home that I don't know the history of? This is not small, but at least it had a history before it came into my life. Put the object in your hands, close your eyes, relax, and feel what your body feels. That's a weird way to phrase that. I really got nothing. I actually just kept thinking that I have another jacket to sell in Vinted, so I should really take pictures of it. Maybe this jacket didn't have much of a life before I owned it. Maybe it didn't exist before I bought it and I willed it into being. Most of the other suggestions are long term and I'm ready to give up honing my psychic abilities and just read the comments to see what other people are using this wiki how for. And straight up we have, how can I mentally control people? Putin. Are you okay, hon? How do I know if I have an evil entity attached to me? You feel that someone's watching you even though there's nothing there. Someone asked, how do I move an object with my mind? And someone answered, you need to practice an ability called telekinesis. No cap, Mary. Oh, so just do the thing that I don't know how to do? Why didn't I think of that? 35 people apparently found this answer helpful. Well, I won't be pursuing a career as a psychic, but I think this stuff can be harmless fun if done with the right intentions. I actually went to a psychic night when I was 17. I went with my friend, she wanted to contact someone from the dead and we were there and the woman just went, is there an Ashley in the room? She knew the name of one of my brothers and a friend of mine who weren't with me, but I did text both of them that night and I might have turned to my friend at some point and went on oh, messaging so-and-so, so maybe the psychic heard me? She told me to get my driver's license, which for a 17 year old is a pretty safe thing to say. She said that I wanted to work in an ambitious field and that I wanted to move across the world to a specific location in order to achieve this and she was right. She also told me to stay away from someone and she gave me a name and it's a very common name but I actually don't know that many people with it and I haven't really met anybody with this name so I'm doing a good job of staying away from them. But yeah, I kind of always took that experience with a pinch of salt. Thanks for watching today. Let me know what you think of the PsyQ world. As you might know, I'm searching for a name for us as a collective and I've had some suggestions, but I'm still thinking about it. So please continue to send suggestions and 
The more abstract, the better. See you next time.